B. Definition of a startup. There is a new definition of startup under the Patents Amendment Rules 2017. Before the rules 2017 came into force, there was an existing definition of startup. So we will just see how the existing definition, which was there before the 2017 rules came into force, has now evolved into a new definition. Earlier, startup was defined through three criteria. The first one was the date of incorporation or registration. Now this had to be five years from the date of incorporation. So any entity which is five years from the date of incorporation or registration qualified as a startup. Secondly, it was defined in terms of its turnover. Now if the turnover in the said five years did not exceed 25 crores, again that was yet another criterion for deciding whether an entity is a startup. The third criteria was with regard to the working of the startup. If the working of the startup pertained to things like innovation, development, deployment or commercialization of new products or services, processes included and that should have been driven by technology or by intellectual property. Now you will find that this third definition had a couple of things. One, it talked about the working and the working had to be with regard to these things. It had to be with regard to innovation, development, deployment or commercialization. And it had to pertain to these three things. Either it could be a product, a process or a service. And it should have been driven by technology or by intellectual property itself. Now this has undergone a change. But bear in mind that this was how a startup was defined. These were the positive conditions for a startup. Five years, it had to be new, it had to be registered within five years, you can claim a startup status or the turnover was less than uh, within five years, it did not exceed 25 crores. Again, it's a financial uh, restraint. If you went beyond 25 crores, then you lose the status of a startup and you had to be working in a particular field. Now, the earlier definition also said that you cannot create a startup by splitting or by reconstruction. So you have an existing business, you just can't turn around, split it, demerge it or, and make a startup. It had to be a fresh start. And also the fact that you are involved in the mere act of developing products and services which do not have a potential for commercialization or undifferentiated products and services or products or services or processes with no or limited incremental value for customers or workflow. Now, these are the negative conditions. If these conditions are there, then it may not qualify for a startup. And there were a couple of explanations. The first explanation said that the entity shall cease to be a startup if it exceeds 25 crores. Okay, so it crosses the threshold of 25 crores in five years. It ceases to be a startup. Then the entity had to be what an entity is entity had to be either a private limited company registered under the Companies Act, so it has to be an entity incorporated under the Companies Act, or a partnership under the Partnership Act, or a LLP, Limited Liability Partnership, under the Limited Liability Partnership Act 2002. Again, these are three enactments under which some form of re registration can be done with regard to startups. So if you are not under the purview of these three acts, then you cannot be called an entity. So that gives the legal framework of who can qualify as a startup. Then turnover takes the meaning of the word, same word in the Companies Act. And you will find that uh, again, you had what the working of the startup should be. It should aim towards uh, developing and commercializing new products and or significantly improve existing product or process and uh, services or create or add value you know, to customers or workflow. And finally, uh, the explanation number five tells us that the reference rate of foreign currency shall prevail. Now, this is with regard to uh, turnover of startups, which has activity or income in foreign currency. So the RBI guidelines shall prevail there. Now, this underwent a sea change in 2017. In 2017, we had this notification come up which amended the rules, the patent amendment rules. Now we have a much simpler definition. Now it just says a startup means 
an entity in India recognized as a startup by the competent authority under the Startup India Initiative. So it makes room for quite a lot of startups to come in because there is no straight line definition. And if you look at the corresponding definition given under the Startup Initiative, you will find that that is something which can change over a period of time. There is no need to amend the rule anymore to incorporate the nitty gritties of a startup or evolving startups. So all that you will find in the startup initiative. So this definition now refers back the definition of a startup to the startup initiative. And again, in the case of a foreign entity, the entity fulfilling the criteria for turnover and period of incorporation registration as per the startup initiative and submitting the declaration to that effect. Uh, turnover again is calculated as by the RBI regulations. This is a notification that changed the patents amendment rules in 2017. Now, this essentially refers you back to another guideline. To understand the definition of startup, we need to go and see the definition of startup given by the DIPP. The Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion gives this definition by this notification which came out in, on 11th April 2018. You have a very elaborate definition here. The advantage of having a definition in a notification is that every time you notify, you come up with a new notification, there is no need to amend the pattern rules. Here, it, you will find that an entity, again, they stick to the word entity. An entity shall be considered a startup if the time for it being considered a startup since incorporation is up to a period of seven years. Now, it used to be five years in the earlier definition. Now, it's up to a period of seven years. And again, the three acts remain. Private limited company under the Comp uh, Companies Act, partnership firm under the Partnership Act, or LLP limited liability partnership under the LLP Act. And it also adds a new sector. It says that in the case of startups in the biotechnology sector, the period shall be 10 years. So what this did was now we have an extended period for being recognized as a startup. Now you have seven years, which was not there. Earlier it was five. And they created a new exception for the biotechnology sector where it is now 10 years. Now you find that you have two terms now. If you are in the biotechnology sector, then up to 10 years, you will be considered as a startup. If you are in any other field other than biotech, then you could be considered as a startup up to seven years. The turnover part of the definition remains the same, not exceed 25 crores within the seven year period or the 10 year period. Then the working of the entity, which we also saw in the earlier def definition, uh, remains innovation, development or improvement of products and services, though you would see that they have removed technology and intellectual property. If you compare with the definition, you find that. We'll take a quick look to see how this has changed. Uh, you had seen here that there was a focus on technology and intellectual property that has now been removed. Or if it has a scalable business model, so one requirement is it the startup needs to have a scalable business model with high potential of employment generation or wealth creation. Now, these are two new things which you didn't find in the earlier definition. So what is required here is that the model has to be scalable and there should be potential for employment generation or wealth creation. And there is a proviso saying that, again, this was, we found this in the earlier definition as well, splitting up and reconstruction of existing businesses will not entitle you to get the startup status. Now, this is the definition. There is an explanation to the definition. The explanation tells us the point at which a startup shall cease to be a startup. Now, you will find that the 25 crore limit is still there. And again, in the case of a startup in the biotechnology sector, the entity shall cease to be a startup if the turnover turns exceeds 25 crores. But the difference here is that in the case of a normal startup, it's seven years. And in the case of a biotech startup, it is 10 years. 
so the notification introduces two timelines for the status of a startup and the point at which startup shall cease to be a startup act is referred to as the income tax act there is a board which refers to the interministerial board of certification which means the interministerial board of certification and the members who comprise the board are listed here a limited liability partnership is defined merchant banker is also defined partnership firm there are other definitions recognition of startups now there is a process for getting recognized as a startup that is also defined here then the tax provisions under the income tax act is also mentioned in the notification and finally you have provisions on how a startup can be revoked or when it would cease to be a startup so you will find more details about the startup definition in the website of um, startup india now you will find that the same definition is given here you can see that the seven year period the types of entities turnover and what they should be working towards when the startup cell ceases to be a, start, a startup and you will also find that there are some numbers around statistics around startups the fact that uh, how many startups have been recognized to date uh, funding and support and and there's quite a lot of details you could also come up and find that the the site gives you various information with regard to startup india hub events and news and state ranking action plan and other things